called Coventry Rag Bone. It's just a handmade paper out of England. Uh, it's really strong and allows me to really dig into it and really do whatever I feel I want to. These are 44 by 60 sheets that I buy in New York. Uh, and I just sort of, I bond them together in the back of the strips of paper over the back. And when I start sanding this, when the amount of sandpaper runs over that bond, it actually creates a line. You can see it behind it. And basically, the way it begins is with this line sheet of paper, which you just saw, and this graphite powder and paper ball, which is the sort of fruit of my labor. Uh, what you'll see in a moment that I, I sand these, I beat them up, I carve them down, I really get into it, and uh, basically it, the paper sort of releases itself and becomes paper pulp, and I collect that and use it again on the next piece. So you, this is principally the ground of the paper, uh, and then I have this way of, of administering it, smearing it, sort of uh, applying it to the, to the surface here. So it's, it's like I said, it's too dirty, it's not fun to do, uh, it's very, very physical. Uh, it's not complicated, but I mean, no more than anyone else's process of working is complicated, but it, it's, like I said, it's bodily. It takes as much to do with your hips and knees and feet as it does to do with, the, with your wrists and eyes. Going to, this is the piece with a giant mark in the middle of it. It's something I found in the Chicago Tribune that takes place somewhere in Delaware. It's the gate to some mansion somewhere. I've never been there, but I was. Lauren, my girlfriend, showed it to me and I was just struck by it. So you can see my, uh, these very sharp lines that are going through and I'm cutting in half, cutting in quarters, cutting in eights, trying to make this, trying to make this happen. But I wanted you, when the piece was done, to be able to see that because it's indicative of what I'm trying to do. I am concerned with transition. I care about recontextualization. This is an old archaeological antique. I want that to carry along with it exactly the, the force that made it, the time and period that made it. Okay. So here are the stencils I decided to make, which are not easy to make. So there you go, I'm trying to smooth things out, trying to measure directly, and this is already on the page, I'm not going to give up, but I can't, I really want to make sure it's right. Application of that whole stencil process. Okay, so there it is. There's the. Uh, how easy was that, right? Inside of that uh, stencil is the drawing behind it. You can see it if you look really close. It's all still there. Every decision I've made is still there. Every mistake I've made is still there. Um, that's basically adhesive, not medium, cut with water. And I'm going to paint that in to those lines. That's that stencil line. It's going to separate what's in those lines from the rest of the paper. So that when I start to reduce that graphite off and take it off, the paper's not going to want to let go of that that has been glued down, stuck down. It drips, gets all over, but everywhere that adhesive runs, it's going to make a line in the paper. And it's all right. Okay, so I've begun to, to really start sanding this thing out so you can see the bonds of the center and across the sides of the piece. Mm -hmm. You really can, you can see where the paper behind it is. There's like a little bridge from there being a bridge there. So I've already sanded this somewhere. I get it on the wall, take it off the wall, put it back on the wall, draw it back in again. It's hard to sort of give an equal amount of attention to all at once, so once you sweep off the dust you've created, you can see where you miss some things and just sort of start over. If you look to the right, you can see the photograph I'm working from. That's all I had to work from. And there it is. Uh, right where I'm going to erase it, I still haven't erased it. So uh, there's these, there's sort of, the chart, the graphite happens to smear in a lot of places and it gets cropped into the paper and I'll I buy these humongous erasers, these palm sized erasers and just start gouging out the graphite. So there it is. Finished finished piece. Well most drawings 
that you look at of, of Leonardo's or anything like that are reductive drawings. He laid down a field of graphite like this. It wouldn't be graphite though, it would be whatever he was using, some powder. And then he extracted from it. He literally put light back into the dark. And that's, and that's what these are referencing. They're very much employing a sort of uh, old way of working. What happened was funny at the show was the guy who lived, one of the person who lived right where this drawing was made, outside of Hyde Park. And he had never seen this thing. And he had lived there for 20 years. And I happened to walk by one day. So that was put there at another time by other people who per perhaps were in conversation with the meaning of this thing. But that thing has been lost. It's gone now. It's not the same. But when you take that, when they get back to your point, when you take that and put it somewhere else, you put it in a gallery, or you put it in a museum, it becomes something completely different. It's re recontextualized. There's the transition. That's the transition right there. There's this strange human way of reappropriating something, recognizing it as uh, a gate. You know, it has these, uh, these very real associations, but why didn't I notice that? Where in my space is that? How did that define my space? So I say the hell out of it because um, I think that that ghostly quality sort of uh, is in, indicative of that transition. Okay, so it's not really working with the metaphor here. I think it's more important to look, or not more important, but more interesting to look at art that contains the, every gesture that a person made while they're making. Uh, it's a record of the process that they went through in order to somehow culminate this visual category. That's, that's what I'm interested in. When did that, when did that game, what was that made? Or what kind of memory is in here? And the paper, for one, is not going to forget any of that. If one thing drawing is good at, it's making a bridge between what you are seeing and the way you see the world. And I fascinated with that. I love that. That's why I've chosen to work in this medium, because that paper is not going to forget a thing you do. These are very personal drawings. These are really very personal. These are about losing something. These are about gaining something and losing something all at the same time. About a loss and about a, a, a regain of this thing is happening all at once and so fast. It's sort of like, and I've been battling with this idea, this, uh, you know, uh, like a shock. What happens in a shock? How you, something will scatter out and come back so we, That displacement that leaves knowledge sort of floating, that leaves your, your identity of yourself sort of floating, that's what these are very much about. Very personal pieces. It's sort of too personal, you know. Only that I don't really know. It's sort of an important thing. It wasn't like a